So hello and welcome to the Soft UK podcast. I'm Kate Hart, the Engagement Officer for the charity Soft, which is a support organisation for families affected by Christ 13 and 18. Today's podcast is an important one, as we'll be discussing a topic, topic that can be quite difficult for people to talk about, which is termination for medical reasons, or TFMR. Bravely joining us today is Marie Rusden, and we'll be sharing her story about her daughter. So welcome, Marie. Hello, nice to see you, Kate. Thanks for being here. Um, so could you start by telling us a little bit about yourself and your family, please? Mm-hmm. So family is made up of myself and my husband, Keith, and we've got a 23-month-old, Austin, <laughs> and he's just coming into the terrible twos. So oh, wow. yeah, there's three of us plus dog plus cat at home, so a little chaotic every now and again. Um, but yeah, Busy household. Have- very busy household yes yeah both of us work full time um and austin definitely gives us a run for our money yes um, that sounds sounds about right for an almost two-year-old yes, yeah and um, so marie we're here to talk about your daughter today could you could you start by telling us about um pregnancy please so um keith and i were originally told we couldn't have children um oh. i was quite poorly in 2017 in 2018 with breast cancer um so we were told treatment from cancer meant that no children um enjoy your lives enjoy your nephews and nieces of which we've got loads um and then austin was a complete and a surprise uh, we mm-hmm. fell pregnant and that pregnancy was absolutely no no issues no warning signs no no issues whatsoever through the whole whole time um he was born in the may and very very quickly they warn you how quick things can happen um, we weren't expecting to fall pregnant twice after being told we could never have children. Um, and yeah, we fell pregnant with Heidi very, very soon after Austin was born. I think he was maybe eight months old, nine months old. Oh, my goodness. When we, we were expecting for a second time, yes. Wow. Yeah, so had our... What a miracle. <laughs> completely, yes. Yeah, not just one, but two, two miracles, mm. yes. Yeah. Um, and yeah, had no reason to believe that pregnancy number two wouldn't go just as swimmingly yeah. as the first one did. Um, so yeah, got excited telling friends and family. Um, we told friends and family around Christmas time. So we, we just kind of got our heads around the idea ourselves and told family when I think I was probably 11 weeks pregnant. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, 12 week pregnancy scan, absolutely glowing report. Um, no issues with baby at all. Everything was looking looking wonderful. Um, they noticed that my blood pressure was slightly high. So I was, because of my age, um, I'm classed as a geriatric mom. It's a terrible, so terrible rude, term. isn't oh, it? So rude. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. so I was having um, a closer examination because they thought I would be high risk of preeclampsia. Um, and that's why we were afforded the second scan at 14 weeks, which is when they noticed there was something not quite right, not quite right in the growth between those two weeks scans. Um, so they, they did the, the blood test earlier um, to test for any abnormalities. Um, mm-hmm. Again, naively maybe, because we'd had such a, an easy pregnancy number one, we, we didn't expect any, any bad news. Um, and yeah, didn't really know what they were testing for. Um, um, and yes, yeah, the, the, the test came back that uh, she was likely to have either um, T18 or, or T13 um, and further tests would be needed to find out at which. And again, didn't have a clue. Never even mm. heard of the <laughs> phrases before. Mm. Um, never heard of the illnesses before. And yeah. from from that moment, it just, everything spoiled out of our control a little bit until yeah. she was born. Mm. So did you have the further testing or did you... Um... We start with the screening results. No, we had the screening results. Um, my husband, probably more so than I, he's very pragmatic. He he was, let's find out. We can't make plans on on the unknown. Um, so yeah, we, we had the further tests. We had the um, the the both sets of tests, the, the tests of the amniotic fluid and the, the test of of actually her DNA as well. Um, mm-hmm. The amniotic fluid came back that there's a high potential of T18. But again, we were offered the opportunity to 100% know for sure um, whether it was full or partial um, and what level, if any sort of uh, abnormalities or disabilities she may have. Um, yeah. And the results came back full, 
full trisomy 18 full edwards okay um and then did you have further scans after that or what did your decision making process look like from that point so from that point um yeah the decision making process started and um, we're both mid 40s i don't think you'll mind me saying he's, his birthday was friday so he's definitely mid 40s <laughs> now. um and yes it was just trying to make the decision what what to do um mm. what's fair on the family i think that was the the hardest thing mm. potentially bringing a little girl home that isn't going to survive the the, the chances of survival i think we, we were given a 20 percent survival rate to 15 days and the heartbreak that that would have caused Keith mm. and I, but also the effect it would have had on Austin at the time, who would have been, oh, she oh, would have been just over one, maybe one coming up to one and a half when she was born. Um, mm. So yeah, it was his consideration as well that we'd have to go through all of the heartbreak at the very end, when potentially, mm. if we're making the decision now, we're, we're making that heartbreaking decision now without nine months of heartbreak. Um, yeah. Yeah, not not easy, not easy. We of course we knew we both knew what we wanted to do, but then verbalise this. I think is probably the best way of describing it. We didn't want to say this is what we have to do, but yeah. ultimately our choice was that that we would have to to terminate for medical reasons. But for yeah. our family, it was the right decision to make at that time. Yeah, and that's all anyone can really do is make the best decision for their set of circumstances for their reasons and your reasons will be different to somebody else's reasons yeah. and your considerations and your set of circumstances. So yeah. um, Marie, how, how are you supported by the medical professionals that you were dealing with? How did, how did they handle the news and the diagnosis and your decision making? So they, they were absolutely amazing. I, I can't fault the hospital staff at all. It's the same hospital that, that we've been in to have Austin. Um, I didn't feel like I knew them, but I felt like I knew the process. Mm. And had, mm. I was used to the rooms that they were all going in. Um, but the surgeon, who ultimately was the, the lady who was, who was going to, to perform the, um, the, the the procedure, came in and I think my my memory of her was her getting upset as well, holding mm. my hand and her getting upset saying, I think you're making the right decision. And I know... Mm whatever decision I would have made, she would have said that I'm making the right decision because that's mm. the right thing for her to say. But at that time, I needed that that mm. affirmation from a medical profession that had we been in that situation, she would have, have done that too. Yeah. Um, whether she would have or not, I, I don't. but I needed to hear that, that, that it was going to be okay because we were doing the right thing. Yeah. yeah so exactly. I, can't, I can't fault the staff. They were amazing. Really, really good. I think they appreciated as well my, my lack of knowledge I definitely have to find out the ins and outs of everything. So as soon as we were told, we were, we were Googling. Um, so we already knew before we found out the, the sex of, of the baby, before we knew we were having a girl, I'd already Googled the, the percentage rates of, of boys versus girls having trisomy yeah. 18. So I was already prepared for all of that information. Um, there, there were some bits of information that shocked me. And I think that's, that's the, I didn't realise there'd be a baby. I, I thought when I heard mm. the word termination, I think of mm. miscarriage. I think of, mm. um, you know, a horrific incident at home. You're not going through a procedure. Mm. You know, the, the pregnancy's ended. You, 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 you've lost the pregnancy. But that the following day, you just get up and, and move on. I, I didn't realise there'd be a hospital. I didn't realise there'd be a baby. I didn't realise there would be a being um, at the end yeah. of it. Um, and they were amazing. Um, my questions, I must have just fired them off so that there were millions of questions. But I remember mm. that one saying, sorry, you had just wait one minute. You, you mean there's going to be a baby? And she was like, yeah, mm. yeah. And, and they dealt with my shock at that, I think, mm. amazingly, amazingly. Because, yeah. yeah, very naively, I just didn't didn't have that experience at all. Well, I think... I think we hear so often that people had never heard of these conditions when they were first given the diagnosis. It's a very common thing. Um, but it's it's really interesting you saying, you know, your perception of, of what was actually involved. And because how many weeks were you at the time when, when your daughter was born? Uh, when she was born, we were just shy, a day shy of 18 weeks. 
Okay, yeah, so that's also a really interesting point that maybe for some people, um, they just didn't even realize what was actually involved. Mm -hmm. And perhaps you, one of the first people has actually admitted that, but I bet there are loads of people who don't actually <clears throat> understand exactly how far along, you know, the development of the, the baby is yeah. and how they can come as a real, real shock. Yeah, and, and that's the, the thing that's wanted, why I wanted to come on the podcast is just to, I didn't have a clue and I've been on the soft um, Facebook page and I've been on the on the um, website and I've been left, right and centre looking for answers. And it wasn't until I asked the question, there's going to be a baby, that that, that was answered because um, I just did not did not have a clue. Um, mm. I just thought after having Austin and giving birth and all of the um, the things that ladies have to go, <laughs> go through after having birth, it would just be very similar to that. I'd, you know, yeah. I'd be in a little bit of discomfort. Um, it would be like a heavy period, and then we go mm. back to normal within twenty four hours. Uh, yeah. yeah, the reality was was different, but I'm glad I asked because had I not asked, oh, and by yeah. the, time the procedure had started, I think the yeah, I think that would have been ten times worse. Ten times worse. Absolutely, absolutely. I think being prepared in these situations counts for a lot because there's so little you can control but at least if you are prepared for what's going to happen in whatever way that may look yeah. um I think it, it helps you to deal with with what happens after definitely definitely yeah and also helping my husband because he's not going through it but mm. he was there um and just mentally preparing each other that at the end of it that this is what we're going to have um, and the choices yeah. that that then brings. Do we want to meet her? And um, mm. how do we want to meet her? And mm. yeah, all, all of the choices that come afterwards as well. Yeah, just wasn't yeah. prepared for until I asked that, that one important question. Um, yeah. And then I could prepare. I had 14 days, what, however long it was to, to prepare for that. Yeah. And did you find those 14 days excruciating or were you pleased that you had that little bit of time? I mean, I suppose everyone's experience is different. Um. It was, I think we had 14 days before our, our last scan. Um, but from being told that we were pretty sure she's she's got trisomy 18 to the actual procedure, probably three and a bit weeks. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't say they were excruciating because I knew it was almost a bit of, because I'd made the decisions, it was just the weight. The weight, the weight mm. was difficult, um, mm. but a hard decision had been made at, at, mm. at that point. Um, and yeah, they kept in contact with me every every week. We, we were getting phone calls. This is what's going to happen on this day, and um, we'll get you in for this procedure. Um, yeah, at no point did I feel like they were just leaving me to wait. It was just okay. a case of let's get this done at the right time for you and for for mm. everybody else um mm. yeah I did, like I say I can't fault the staff they they handle me for both of us all of us mm. you know consider it about there's only my husband and I we don't have any family down here so who's going to look after Austin while we're at the hospital appointments yeah and we were just coming out of Covid I think um so obviously how many people are allowed in the room how long are we allowed to stay there for mm. and all of those considerations and it was at that time where I imagine some pregnant women were going and having to receive news without being allowed their partners there or their mm. partners were to wait in the corridor. Um, mm. Yeah, I can't imagine what that would have been like had Keith not been allowed in the room. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it adds a whole other layer of stress and trauma in a way, doesn't it? Completely, um, yeah. To be separated. Yeah. yeah. And Marie, did you get a, a chance to create some nice memories with, with Heidi and, and spend some time with her? Yes, yeah, we, um, oh, this is when my tissue's going to come out. We, um, yeah, we got to meet her. Um, we got to meet her lots. Whenever I said I wanted a, a cuddle, I, I brought her down. Um, oh. Yeah, they, uh, we were in a separate ward from the hospital. I think one of my fears was that I'd be in the same ward as other mums um, mm. and babies being born and, Mm. Yeah, I, as much as I didn't want to not want to be a part of that because that's a yeah gorgeous moment for them I 
I didn't want that because I'm going I'm going home empty-handed. Yeah. Um, so there's a separate ward in our hospital um, where you have your your own midwife. Um, so I had the the two midwives who, who worked the shift. Um, and yeah, whenever I wanted to have a cuddle, they they brought her up. And um, there was two teddy bears the first time we met her. Um, one for us to keep and one for Heidi, we called her, one for Heidi to keep. And I just, mm. little touches like that meant the world, meant the absolute yeah. world. And that's, that's the memories that we've got now. We've got her, her bear, we call it Heidi Bear. Um, mm. And that's Austin's bear at bedtime now. Mm. And just in that, that little memory. And, that, and, and Austin got to meet her. Um, oh, did he? Mm, yes, yes. So on, on the morning that we were ready to leave, um, and again, there's no there was no pressure to leave the hospital. We could have stayed there all week. Oh, I'm mm. sure somebody at some point would have given us an eviction mm. notice, but we could have stayed there yeah. if we wanted. We had our own room. Um, and yes, on the last morning, Keith brought Austin in to, to see her and we had had our, our goodbyes. Hospital arranged mm. for the um, chaplain to come and do a little naming ceremony, a little blessing. Oh. So yeah, all of those little touches now, just over a year on, and what we hold on to, they they mean the absolute yeah. world that we had that time. Yes, yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure, because those memories are now all you really have. Mm. Um, so they it just proves how important they are. Yeah. So Austin would have been one or just thereabouts. I mean, what? Did, how did he react? How? Did, what did you tell him? I mean, it's it's such a tricky age, but how did you handle the whole thing with him? So he obviously will never remember meeting um Heidi and we didn't take photos of them to together um yeah I think I mean we talk or I talk, certainly talk about him having a little sister um mm. and whenever we're tucking him in at night we, we Heidi Bear and he he tries to talk and say Heidi Bear back to us mm. so he knows his bear is called Heidi um and yeah when he when he's older um got a little locket with both of their names on um and when he's falling asleep, he, he plays with the locket. Um, mm. So at some point, I'll tell him that that's the name of his mm. little sister on there as well. And yes, no, we'll we'll, we'll tell. She, she's a part of our lives. Um, yeah, he'll understand at some point. I know he will. Yeah, when when he's eight, when the age is right, and mm. and when he can understand. But yeah, like you say, she's part of your life. She'll always be part of your family. Yeah. Nothing you can take away from that. And he'll always have a little sister called Heidi. So it's really special, yeah. Yeah. Marie, with all the Googling that you were doing and the research, uh, is that when you came across Soft or how did you get in touch with the, the charity? Yeah, so it, it was definitely Googling. Um, I'm a big believer in looking for support um, and like-minded people. I know when I was poorly... I wanted to find something that was going through exactly what I was going through, just so mm -hmm. that I could I could share my my experience with them as well. Um, selfishly, I find it quite cathartic helping mm -hmm. another person or helping other people going through what I've gone through and talking about it. It's, it's another level of um, it's another level of grief, grieving and being able to mm -hmm. to deal with that grief. So yeah, when I when I found soft and they encourage you to write your your story or you know. This is why I'm here. And at that point, we hadn't um, we hadn't had the procedure. We'd just been told we um, had a hundred hundred percent full trisomy eighteen, um, and we yeah we were booked in for, for the procedure. And su support was just amazing, just incredible. Of people that have never met me, I've never met them, um, but have all either been through the same thing or know somebody that that has. Um, mm. And yeah, just that little little comment of. Thank you for your story. All the best. Just we're thinking of you. Yeah. Just just mm. meant a lot. Um, mm. And then being able to help other women since then who have put their story and have said, "What what can I expect at this point?" And being able to mm. tell them, "Well, oh, this is what we experienced." Um, you may find that that your your health trust is the same, but this is what you could ask for. This is or this is what you could research. Yeah, it's it's just another level of of being able to grieve. From my point of view amazing so so you're talking there about the facebook support groups are you yes yes yeah 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 so for anyone listening who doesn't know about those those are our closed private support groups which um people can join and it's a place for people to share ask questions as marie said share their stories 
Um, it's a place to remember. Um, and we've got a range of groups um, from bereavement to groups for dads to specific groups on um, ending a pregnancy. Uh, we've even got one for siblings. So yeah, if you'd like to find out a bit more about our Facebook support groups, please get in touch. There's, we, we hope that there's one for every person out there. So um, it's lovely to hear your feedback that it's it's been so worthwhile for you to be part of the, that group. So thanks it's for sharing. And, and throughout the different stages as well, I joined the different groups. So at the okay. point we've just been diagnosed, I joined that group. Um, at the point where we had to make the decision, I joined that group. And then, yeah, mm. so I think it was three or four different groups along my my journey, our journey that, that I joined and, mm. yeah, linked in with, with all of them. And, yeah, found it really, really beneficial. Oh, good. It's wonderful to hear. Um, Maria, it's, it's a recent loss, but how would you say that you have coped since losing Heidi? Um, it's difficult. It's a big question. Um. We, I think, for for Keith and I, it's our it's our bubble, um, and we dealt with it in our our bubble. The year anniversary was was tough, um, but we both booked the day off work. We spent it with Austin, taking him to his little little play group, and we spent that time with Austin. And then in the evening, we we opened the memory box. Um, there's a little candle in there that we could light and sort of her little hand and footprints were all all in there on the, on the pages so yeah that the year anniversary was tough um but in between that um, time is definitely a healer and for me talking about it is a healer um mm -hmm. the amount of people that I've spoken to who have said oh we went through something similar or I didn't realize you went through that I did this or we went through this 10 15 years ago um and nobody talks about it mm -hmm. nobody does and it's it's nothing to be ashamed of and I think that that's the big thing it's that we made a decision to terminate for medical reasons and I think that's the important bit it's it wasn't it wouldn't be an easy decision for any reason but the four medical mm. reasons I think should alleviate family's guilt um mm. we did it for the right reason um and yes in, in my mind, and then the nurses confirmed that had Heidi survived, had we, we gone full term, um, those 15 days potentially that she survived, she would have been poorly. And mm -hmm. we just couldn't, we just couldn't have that suffering. And I think that's what makes it easier to keep moving on. Um, mm -hmm. The fact that we, we did the right thing for us at the time. And yeah, yeah. It's hard. There, there's still heartache there and there's still things that, that remind us. Um, I think because we we have our little bubble, it's yeah. that that's all all that we need, and we keep moving yeah. on for, for Austin. He he won't let us yeah. sit down on that no. piece anyway. <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> you don't get you don't get to rest when when you have a two year old around. <laughs> no, definitely not. I'm very surprised he's still asleep now. Actually, it's quite nice. <laughs> oh, brilliant! I made last. Yes, <laughs> so we can finish our chat. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, just as we start to wrap up, Marie, um, you've kind of touched already on what made you share your, what made you want to share your story. Um, it, was it just about raising the awareness for this uh, procedure, really? Yeah, a hundred percent raising awareness. Um, and also the two friends that have come to me after I've told them my story that I had no idea that they'd been through if not the same, something very, very similar. Um, and we're, we're friends and even friends mm -hmm. haven't discussed it with friends. And I think, mm -hmm. I think that's the big reason that it shouldn't be taboo. And I think mm -hmm. a problem shared is a problem halved. And mm -hmm. I don't mean that to sound flippant, but it, it's, it's good to talk. And I think talking mm -hmm. about it is, for me, certainly, it, it it helps, and it's it's helped a lot being able to talk to talk about it. And those friends, when they've said we went through something very similar, we've had a good cry and a mm. good hug, and it's okay. I now I get you, and you get me, and mm. get little messages on Heidi's anniversary because now they know, and, it, mm. and it, yeah, that means the world. Yes, yeah. Now I, I raising awareness so important. So yeah, I'm glad I'm doing it. 
Thank you. Um, and would you have any advice for any other families going through something similar? I mean, what would you say to someone in your shoes a year ago? Uh, ask all the questions. Any, any question that pops up, yeah, just ask. Um, do your research, but I appreciate that some of the some of the things that you read from Google can scaremonger to a certain degree, mm -hmm. um, but definitely for forearmed is forewarned. And from those searches on the internet, I was able to say, well, okay, that this has happened to X amount of people. Is this likely to happen to us? Um, yeah, and, and just ask as many questions. At no point did I think I was asking a silly question of any of the medical professionals. They, they never once made me feel daft. Um, yeah, just keep asking questions. And I'm very lucky that I've got a supportive husband, but any support. And I'm sure if people were to talk about it more with friends and family, there'd be other friends and family who have said, we went through something similar, if not the same. Mm -hmm. And it makes it, it just makes a big difference being able to talk. Yeah, and, and feeling like you're not the only one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, or what have I done wrong? Like what, mm. what have I done to, you know, did I know about the pregnancy from day one or have I had one glass of wine and this has created this, this yeah. situation? Yes, yeah, just just share and probably not, not feel guilty as well. Mm. The procedure itself itself and everything that's going on is hard enough without you adding guilt on top I think that's mm -hmm. probably what I tell myself yeah yeah okay well thank you Marie we really appreciate you sharing your story with us today um and I really hope that this conversation has given some insight into the difficult decision making process and the aftermath of termination for medical reasons um perhaps there's someone listening today who this will touch and really really help so thanks again thank you and just to say whether you're an expectant parent, a bereaved parent, a family member, or even a professional, if you need support or information, we are here for you. Please reach out to SOFT and our contact details can be found in the podcast below. Thank you for listening to the SOFT UK podcast.